For the past couple of weeks, I've been putting together what I think is the ideal Genesis set list. I've already done a video of the perfect Phil Collins set list, which you can watch later, but let's go through today what I think is the ideal Genesis set list. Welcome to Everything Phil Collins, where we talk about everything Phil Collins, including Genesis. And you know, the Genesis content here on the channel is quite popular. Genesis fans are very, very passionate, which is why I'm afraid to make this video because, you know, you can't please everyone, but hopefully we get pretty close. And some a caveat here as I show you the set list, and I'll get it to you in a second while I can show you right now if you want. As we get into the set list, I was trying to think of something, a, a Genesis set list that would cover all of the decades. Imagine the band was still active and and it wasn't, I wasn't really necessarily putting together a farewell tour, but it is kind of covering all of the bases or a lot of the bases. I think there are some things missing here you might, you might be sad about, but oh man, I had a ton of fun doing this. I'd encourage any of you <laughs> to put together your ideal set list because it's like Genesis fan fiction. It's it's a lot of fun. So I think I've got something here that I think a lot of you like. One of the things I realized for the band was that, man, this must have been a challenge. I think from, I think maybe from Invisible Touch onward, I could see this being a real challenge for them to uh, cover all the bases, to, to hit all those albums. And as they get into um, the Way We Walk tour and, and, and the 2007 tour and beyond, I can imagine it'd be really difficult to try to uh, appease everyone, to, to do some of the old stuff, to do of course like the hits you know the the things that that people who bring um, a family member or a friend who's not a diehard Genesis fan, you know, to, for the songs for them to recognize like Invisible Touch or Hold On My Heart or In Too Deep. And then to cover that huge middle. And I think the bulk of my set list actually comes from this messy middle here of, of you know, maybe Selling England by the Pound up until maybe Duke or Abacab or even Genesis, I, I suppose. But and there is a lot that happens in that, in that post-prog pre-prog, post-prog, mid-prog, pre-pop era. So here we go without further ado. Let me get out of the way here so I can put it up on the screen. Let's just keep in mind that I'm trying to make a set list that I, I feel like, you know, some of the really older fans would like, some of the, the fans who were fans for most of the years, as well as the people who would just be considered pop fans. So I know I'm basically trying to put together a set um, that is similar to the 2007 and 2021 set. But um, just to keep that in mind, at the same time, I want to do things differently than that. Because I think one of the things I was a little disappointed about 2021 was that it was pretty similar to 2007. There were a little bit of changes like Fading Lights and Duchess. As a whole, I think it was pretty similar. So let's start with the opening track. And I would put the opening track as I Know What I Like. I know it. Let me explain. Let me defend this thing because I don't think they've ever opened with I Know What I Like because for a long time it was like their hit song uh, and then it became a deep cut. Here's why I think it could make a good opener. Now, I'm not sure it would really energize like people who don't know their deep catalog, but I think it's a cool opener. Um, and obviously the best opener of all time, I believe, is the behind the lines or the Duke's uh, intro, basically, that they kind of made up on the last two tours into Turn It On Again. Turn It On Again is an incredible way to open a reunion tour, right? I mean, it's just the, the title alone, but also just that dunk, 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 what a great feel. So I can't beat that, but I just don't love that they did it twice. And so if I'm putting together an ideal set list, I've got to come up with something different. And I, I can't rehash that, even though I do think that's brilliant. I don't think there's a better opener I've ever heard than those, the Dukes intro that, you know, that obviously is how it should have appeared on the album. But so I have to do something different. I think that opening up with this more artsy tune, which is an incredibly awesome, energetic song, especially when they do the kind of the out, you know, the, the quiet part of the bridge and then they build it up again. Uh, would they do the tambourine thing? I don't know. It, 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 that's not the point. Um, I just think it's a really, it's an interesting song to open with. It's actually my favorite Genesis song. It has that kind of Leslie sound, that big uh, low mid-range um, uh, organ sound that opens up at the beginning and then the drums kick in. So I think that would be cool. The lights go down and then you hear that that kind of rotating sound. Um, I think that would be really cool to open with. So that's why I picked I Know What I Like as an opener. So then we move on to Land of Confusion, which I know is they've done that before. I, to me, I just like to get Land of Confusion out of the set. It's a, it's a good opener. Um, as we talk about openers in the past, they've opened with um, Duke's intro, like I mentioned, or behind the lines ish. Um, but they've also opened with Land of Confusion, I believe. Uh, didn't they open with that on uh, the We Can't Dance tour? And then they've opened with Mama before. So I think, I think Land of Confusion belongs early in the set. They've always done it early in the set. And again, if we're going to consider, I know what I like to be a deep cut, and then let's give the fans uh, something that they're more familiar with. So Land of Confusion is a cool way to, to keep on going. Now, this third song is No Son of Mine, which again is kind of borrowing from 
the We Can't Dance era. I think they did Land of Confusion, and then they did No Son of Mine. So I understand this. We're copying things a little bit. We'll deviate in a second. But I do think that works. I look at these three songs, and I feel like you have a deep cut that's very emotional. It's a big, big swelling song, a fun song to open with. And then a, a just a poppier song um, that's just a little bit more energetic than I know what I like. And then No Son of Mine kind of brings it down a little bit. So I, that's that's what where I'm going with this. And then, okay, so now what we have to do on these sets when you plan a Genesis set is you really do have to kind of insert some of these long songs where things kind of get a little bit deep and crazy. And maybe um, the person that you brought with you who isn't familiar with deep cuts, maybe sits down for this time, kind of like, you know, Domino or In the Cage or Home by the Sea. So I wanted to throw this early in the set because I think it's really fun. And I wasn't always a fan of these two songs, but I've become a big fan of these two songs. Same with Domino. Uh, I think it was the the latest tour that that really won me over on these songs, especially the second half of these songs. Things get really exciting. So I hear I put Home by the Sea, second Home by the Sea. Now, in classic Genesis fashion, and I'll talk about this more later on in a sec, but in classic Genesis fashion, you always have to give uh, the fans a carrot at the end of the stick, a little reward for sitting through like a 10-minute Home by the Sea, second Home by the Sea, and you usually do something lighthearted. And so we have a couple times in this set where I do That's All or I'll do one of the pop songs as to kind of reward the fans for getting through like a, a deep cut. Now, if you're like me, Everything is great. Everything's a reward. It doesn't matter what song it is, you enjoy it. So, but you know, for some people, um, they'll everyone will have a song where they go to the bathroom. And so for some people, that might be during that's all. But I think it's kind of nice to do that's all after Second Home by the Sea, um, just as a little reprieve to try to give people some pop songs and then to give some people some some deep cuts. So I've got, you know, the songs are are on these past three songs are all on the same album, but um, I think that's okay. Okay, so now I want to introduce. I did. I did this in a way uh, on my Phil Collins set list when, with the um, with the kind of Afro Latin influence Motown section. So I've come up with this little medley. Now Genesis are Genesis have always done these medleys, and or certainly in in the middle and to late of their career. And for the most part, it's been a way to kind of check the boxes of a lot of old songs, songs like In the Cage or Apocalypse or Firth of Fifth or Cinema Show. And some of the older tunes, they've used this as an opportunity to get them out of the way and then to get on with the more upbeat, poppy or 80s stuff. So what I thought I'd do for this set, and again, this is just my ideal set list. You might want to do this your own way, but I like the idea of a medley, but I was thinking about doing a medley that's a little bit more from their 80s stuff, late 70s, early 80s stuff, which I think could be cool. Songs that we don't hear live very often, um, but would be fun if we kind of uh, melted them all together because they're all kind of aggressive synthy songs. So I would start this section off with the Brazilian. And I think it, the Brazilian is super fun. They did it early in the set on the 87 tour. Um, I would love to hear it. It's one of my favorite instrumentals from Genesis. If not my favorite, they don't have tons, but it's one of my favorite. Uh, I think it's a really great track. And I think it's um, it really brings... I think it probably saved Invisible Touch for a lot of fans because a lot of fans who weren't crazy about the pop direction, the Brazilian and Domino can really save that. And, and so I love the Brazilian. And so I don't know how much of it we play in this medley here, but then we eventually go into Abacab, very similar to what they did in 87, where Abacab was early on in the set. And then I think it was maybe followed by uh, That's All or and then the Brazilian. I can't quite remember, but I would kind of, Abacab is very long. The Brazilian is not very long, but you could do the Brazilian into Abacab. I don't know what that would sound like. Maybe one day I'll mix some sort of little mashup, but I, as you get a sense here, this like brashy um, 80s synthy uh, drum machine little medley here, I just I feel like it's about time, right? Because they used to always call the the um, their their medleys the old medley because it was these were done in the 90s of songs from the 70s or early 70s, late 60s, and so. But now when we look at Duke and Abacab, that is old music now, right? So I kind of feel like if they were to continue to tour, if they were healthy and if they were just touring nonstop, I feel like it's about time that we hear a medley of what some of us younger fans might consider their old older stuff. So I just feel like the old medley's been done and I, I've taken some of those songs and I think we should play them in full here. Um, but in this case, we should do... a. a, a 
a medley of, of 80 stuff. And so from Abba Cab, I would go into Man of Our Times. I love Man of Our Times. I've heard a lot of people not loving that song, but I've also heard some people who are with me that Man of Our Times is good. I think it would be a fun song live because of the, the big chorus. Now, obviously, I'm putting the set list together in the fantasy that Phil's voice is in top form. So this could have made a great 2007 set list, in my opinion. Uh, and especially now that we know that 2021 existed as a fair, as an actual farewell tour. Now, knock on wood, who knows? Maybe 10 years from now, they'll all tour in their 80s. That'd be awesome. So anyway, to close off this little medley, and as I think about this, there could be more that we would put in this medley. I'm not sure what else. You could maybe put Keep It Dark in there somehow. Um maybe something else from Duke, I think would make a lot of sense. Uh, maybe, maybe you throw in, uh, maybe you close it off with Duke's travels could be kind of cool. So that was the idea with this. And again, now let's go into mama. Now we're going to kind of reward, even though mama is actually would almost fit into this a little bit. And maybe, you know, maybe this like medley here could have done something sort of eighties ish from, from the shapes album. I'm not sure what that could be, um, maybe just a job to do. I, I don't know, but maybe mama could flow into it, but I think mama deserves its own standalone section. So I would do mama here again as a reward for anyone who's kind of like Brazilian Abacab man of our times are kind of deep cuts, maybe not Abacab, but for most newer fans or radio fans, those would be deep cuts. And so you want to reward them again with mama anywhere. Mama works anywhere in the set. I mean, as an opener, it was a bit dark, uh, and it was a bit early in the set, I think, in the 2021 tour, as far as I'm concerned. But to me, it works here. Okay, so now I've got another section here. And I like that they did the acoustic um, medley on this tour. And so I want to explore that a little bit more. I think any any kind of song from the early days, any kind of soft tune could go in here. But I want to kind of create this little acoustic medley. But instead of taking songs like Follow You, Follow Me... Uh, and that's all, which are fine acoustic songs in the lamb. I actually want to take like real soft, pretty tunes. So I want to take something like your own special way and play that out. I know, like, I think your own special way is beautiful. I know a lot of people hate that song. Like, I've seen see people talk about that song and just absolutely loathe it. And maybe if you were a Genesis fan and that was the first time you came upon back in, in, you know, in that era, that was the first time you came upon such a soft romantic song. Um, I mean, ripples should have been an indication, but your own special way may have been a time where you're like, whoa, where did this come from? It sounds too ballady for my band, but I think it's a beautiful song. So I would play your own special way, super acoustic-y and piano-y and, and then meld it with ripples um, because both those songs are absolutely beautiful. They played ripples in 2007, which is incredible. Uh, and so I would do this, this just this way, like really soft acoustic, um, folksy medley of, of the really pretty tunes, your own special way ripples. And then afterglow, I love when they end in a medley with afterglow. Um, and I got massive goosebumps when they played afterglow in 2021, I think it was fading lights, cinema show and afterglow. If I'm not mistaken, there may have been one other one in there. Firth of fifth was in there. I can't remember now. Sorry. I got to do some research before I hit record, but I don't. That's my little medley. So I've got two medleys here. I've got this brashy, aggressive 80 synth medley, then Mama as a little bit of a breather, although that's not too much of a breather. And then I have this folksy, um, really soft, uh, feminine, as Tony Banks would call it, uh, medley of your own special way, Ripples, and maybe get down off, you know, or maybe like Coldplay, you go into like deep into the the rafters. Uh, I think it would take a little too long for those old guys to get up into the rafters, but you know what I mean? Okay, so coming out of Afterglow, you have to, the lights drop, right? And you've got to take down this acoustic set. And so on the previous, most recent tour, they had this super elongated intro for Duchess, I believe. And they played that as the stagehands took down the, the um, acoustic set. And so that's where I think I put Tonight Tonight. Now, a lot of people put Tonight Tonight into Invisible Touch. I don't think that works. I really don't think that works. And I think Tonight Tonight works better early in the set. In 2021, I had wished they'd played it much earlier, like at the top of the set. I just don't think putting it down in the deep in the set does much justice to it. I think it's a beautiful song. It's a really cool song. It's like Mama. So I think like having that, um, that really, really interesting drum machine, that having that elongated in the intro like they did with Duchess would be really cool coming out of this acoustic set. So that's where I'd put Tonight Tonight. 
Then I'd have that go into Domino one and two. I'm realizing there's a lot of these like 80s, dark 80s songs, Domino, Tonight, Tonight, the Brazilian Abacab, Man of Our Times. But I don't know. I that's I really enjoy that stuff. And I know a lot of fans do. Um, so that's where I would put that stuff. And I put Domino one and one and two after Tonight Tonight. And again, you see this like um, you see this like uh pattern here because I'd follow it with hold on my heart. So you see this pattern where I feel like when you do something like uh, a lot of people love tonight tonight, but then you do domino one and two, which is very long. And a lot of people sat down uh and and went on their phones or went to the bathroom in 2007 and in, in 2021 when they did those. And I, in 2007, I wasn't really a fan of domino. Um, I think if you watch that video when they struggled with the the motion graphics in the background, you really start to get sick of that hearing that song. Um, but I enjoy it a lot more now and I really enjoyed it in 2021. So, but you still have to kind of reward those people who are just kind of pop fans. I don't know if rewarding is the right way, but the way I've designed this set is like, if even for me, if I, you know, after experiencing a 10 minute long aggressive song, like Home by the Seas or um, or the Domino Suite, then I feel like I kind of just need a breather. And so I put Hold On My Heart here. I love Hold On My Heart. I was upset to not hear it in 2021, um, but I think it's a really pretty tune. And you remember, you know, songs like this or In Too Deep, there might be some people who had this song played at their wedding. Maybe it was their first dance. And so they want to come and they want to hear that song. So I've kind of put a heart next to these times in the set where I kind of, you know, give a little treat to the audience for being so patient. Okay, so now I want to play the cinema show and I really want to play it pretty much in full because I don't want to throw it as a medley. It's my favorite song. I mean, it's up there. Like it's in my top five, maybe even my top three. I love the cinema show. So I I really would like to have it done nicely here. And again, another little, just another little treat after that, Follow You, Follow Me is a beautiful song. So cinema show's long. So after Cinema Show, I, I would do something uh, really sweet like Follow You, Follow Me. I think, you know what, as I look at this over, we might want to take Follow You, Follow Me and put it up into that acoustic set. I didn't love the way the um, acoustic electric guitar sounded on Follow You, Follow Me It's uh, that they did in 2021. It sounded a little too plasticky for my liking because I just love that flangey um, electric guitar sound of Mike's on the album. So I was disappointed not to hear a full version of follow you, follow me on this latest tour. So that's why I have it here after cinema show, but you could put it up in that acoustic medley if you want. Now I've put living forever here, which I wasn't going to, but somebody recently just posted a YouTube video of them rehearsing this song. And I thought, man, that is a great song. And it really live. It really worked well because at the end, Phil could get on the drums and there's a really great outro to this, a great keyboard solo and a great drum part. So it's like drum machine all the way up until the end where the drums come in. So I put it on here just because I thought, hey, listen, we're doing, we're not necessarily doing a farewell set where we're trying to check a lot of boxes. We're just doing something interesting. So that's why I put living forever on here. And we don't have a huge representation yet of we can't dance. I mean, really at all, right? Except for no son of mine. Okay. So now this is strange. I would do man on the corner. Um, a little breather after living forever, which is a big tune, but I love man on the corner. A lot of people love man on the corner. And I just think it would be really cool. Just a super mellow drum machine tune. You know, one of those songs where Phil just kind of takes a breather and wipes the sweat off of his body. <laughs> so I, I just, I kind of think man on the corner would be fun to hear live in, in these days. I also think the drum machine of man on the corner that I, I, I can't remember now if it was a CR 78, but I feel like that blending into the drum machine of Duchess, which is a CR-78. And that's why I put Duchess after Man on the Corner. Man on the Corner could be just a really short segue. You don't even have to do the whole tune. Um, just, you know, just a kind of a nice little piece of it into Duchess, I think would be really nice. Duchess is a, a lot of people's favorite Genesis song or, or in their top 10 for sure. And it was a real surprise for people to have that on the 2021 tour. So I wanted to include it here and I wanted to include it in a nice special spot lower in the set list as we kind of begin the descent. 
Another great song from 2021 that was super meaningful was Throwing It All Away. And the way that they did the cassette spines with the videos and photos from the years was so special. And so I wanted to put it in a, uh, I think I wanted to put it in a better spot than I thought it was given in 2021, closer to the end. I actually feel like it could have been a good closer. And so this is kind of how I have it almost as a closer here. Um, But basically, I think once you start playing this song, the emotions start to rise. This is a really beautiful song. And having this segue into what will become the ending of this set, I think is really important. And so coming out of Duchess, everyone loves that song. Um, I think it'd be really nice to maybe even blending the, the fading of the CR 78 to the start of the shaker. I don't know, maybe. So then after throwing it all away, we've got to put carpet crawlers. Now I didn't put carpet crawlers as my closer. You'll see, I have a couple closers here, um, but carpet crawlers is beautiful. And obviously I have no complaints with them closing with it in 2007 and closing with it recently. Um, it's stunning and it's so emotional. Lyrically, it lyrically does not make as, as much sense as Fading Lights would to close, but melodically, it's it's a beautiful song and probably my top five, easily my top five Genesis songs. So I've put Carpet Crawlers here. Now, it's not the closer. The closer for tonight's show, pre-encore, mind you, is Fading Lights, which a lot of people were excited to have on the latest tour, did not not excited to have truncated, did not transition well into Firth of Fifth or Cinema Show. I think it was Cinema Show. It did not translate well. It was very abrupt. So Fading Lights, lyrically, like how sad that is and and the beautiful keyboard solo, um, it really should have been played in full. Uh, and it was okay in on the We Can't Dance tour, but it would have so much more meaning now uh, at the at the obvious end of the the road for these guys. So I would do this like trilogy here, where you have throwing it all away, super emotional, and with the videos and the cassettes, then carpet crawlers like really bringing it down, and 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 the curtains starting to fall, or or it's like on the Butt Serious tour when the carousel started to close. Uh, and then fading lights. I, I just I feel like carpet crawlers into fading lights would be really beautiful. And then this big ending of fading lights with a big solo. Yeah, I think just like ending with remember and then just like that slow synth is would be really beautiful. And so to me, here's what I plan. So this is the last song of the set. And so the lights are uh, are dimming and it go, it's going dark and the band starts to leave the stage and you still have this like pad and and the strings playing out of fading lights and the drum machine. So it's very obvious to the crowd. And this they do this all the time in, at rock shows where when they don't put the house lights on, they don't put the exit music on, then you know that there's more to come. And so with this kind of like fading lights, fading out, them leaving the stage, I feel like that would be really epic as a great, pre-encore closer. The pre-encore closer on the 21 tour was Tonight, Tonight, Tonight into Invisible Touch. And I just feel like, you know, we're not like at the end of the career here, I think a lot of people are, we're all a little bit more emotional. And so I feel like ending with more cinematic and more emotional songs. We end with Fading Lights. We're obviously coming back for uh, an encore. Here we go. I think this would be fun to come back to Los Endos. Um, I think that would be incredibly mind-blowing. What a great ending song. No pun intended. But I, I think it is, um, I think it's just a great track and I've always loved to hear it live. And they played it in 2007, so I think it would make sense. I think coming back, that would really energize the crowd again. So then we go straight from Los Endos into Invisible Touch because we have to have Invisible Touch. Um, there's some other songs that they normally end with that I haven't included on my list because I just don't really want to hear them anymore. I honestly think coming back from the encore in 21 with I Can't Dance, I know it would get the crowd excited and it's cool to play those sound effects as the band comes back out on stage. But I don't know. I just think for like the farewell tour, it's too much of a silly song. I think Los Endos really shows who the band is. And I would would have loved to hear it in 21 again. Um, But so I put in... Los Andos into Invisible Touch. I mean, Invisible Touch obviously has to be towards the end of the set. That's normal. So then my final uh, song of the night, and so we have a three-song uh, encore. It's a very big encore. But my final song of the night would be Duke's End 
in to turn it on again or Duke's end or behind the lines or however. I mean, really, Duke's travels would be re- very nice too, but some sort of Duke medley in to turn it on again. Um, I just think that would be really great. I, like I said at the beginning of the video, I think that's such a powerful connection, such a great moment when they do that. So this is my set list here. Uh, here it is. I hope you like it. I have some things that the fans, that some of the more passive fans would enjoy, the kids would enjoy, as they say. Um, I have a little kind of an aggressive 80s a medley, a more of acoustic romantic medley, and then a, a big out, and outro uh, encore with Los Endos, Invisible Touch, Dukes, and In to Turn It On Again. So I'm just editing this early in the morning, and I'm realizing um, there's a couple songs that I had wanted to put on this set list, but it, I just couldn't make it work. So I wanted to go through those really quickly because I kind of forgot to mention that. The first of all was like some of the older stuff, like Watch of the Skies, Musical Box, Supper's Ready. I feel like it would have been nice to fit in like a little a super old medley because I was doing the 80s, 70s, 80s medley. Um, so it's too bad we didn't get that in. Jesus, He Knows Me and I Can't Dance. I know it's huge fan favorites, especially I Can't Dance. And I don't think they've ever not played that since the 90s. But I don't love those tunes. So I had to I had to cut something um, for me. I wanted to cut. I really also wanted to fit in It's Going to Get Better. And I thought, actually, now that I think about it, I wonder if you could squeeze that into the acoustic set. That makes the acoustic set a little bit too unfamiliar, whereas the 21, 2021 acoustic set was had the Lamb Lies Down on Broadway, which would be too familiar to some people, but it definitely had those two other hits on either end. So if you were to put It's Gonna Get Better into the acoustic set, I don't know, that would make that whole set a little bit too unfamiliar. Squonk would have been nice to fit in. Me and Sarah Jane would have been fun to put in. Uh, Way of the World. I, I know when I did the review of We Can't Dance, a lot of people said that they're also fans of that song. So it'd be kind of cool to put that in. In Too Deep, I'm a huge fan of. I love that song. And then The Dividing Line, you know, can you imagine like putting in something from the Calling All Stations era? That'd be kind of fun. Let me know what you think of this. I'm curious. Please subscribe and like this video if you did like this video. Uh, even if you didn't like this video, like the video. But let me know in the comments what you think of my set list and let me know in the comments what your ideal Genesis set list is. Thanks so much for watching.